In Creo Parametric, you can create lattices for additive manufacturing using a stochastic method. And stochastic means that it is based on a random probability distribution. And the reason that you would want to use a randomly distributed structure for a lattice is that it's better under compression and shear loading versus regular beam-based lattices. Let's take a look at how to do this. Here I have a part open. It consists of a single body. And if you take a look at the model, right now it's transparent. That's because I'm using some new functionality in Creo 8.0. If I right click on it in the mini toolbar, you can see that there is an icon selected for make transparent. If I go to the view tab, there is a transparency control. And right now for any marked bodies, it is set at 50% transparent and you can control the amount of that transparency. But anyhow, let's go back to the model tab. To create a lattice, you will go to the engineering overflow menu. Here it is down at the bottom. And right now I'm going to replace the body in the part with the lattice. It automatically selected body one. Let's go to the cell type and we have our different cell shapes. And for your different beam based lattices, you've got triangular, square, hexagonal, octagonal. I showed those in other videos. But this icon on the end is for stochastic. And when I choose stochastic, the tab changes. Before I do anything in here, I'm going to go to the cell scale. For some reason, this keeps on changing to a value of 0.5. I don't know why Creo Parametric does that. But let me change the cell scale to 1. And I'm going to change the cell fill parameters right now just because it's pretty small to see. I'm going to change the ball diameter to a value of 1.2. And for the cross section size, let's change that to a value of 0.8. That way you can see the preview a little better. I'll zoom in in a moment. But I'm also going to go to cell type and change the target cell size to a bigger value just so that it doesn't take forever to populate the results. And there you can see on the screen, let me zoom in, a preview of sort of the random distribution that you can get from this type of lattice structure. Let's take a look at some more of the options inside of the cell type tab. Here we have a drop down list where you can choose what method that you want to use for the algorithm that comes up with your different beams. You have Voronoi diagram. I hope I'm saying that right. Or Delaune triangulation. I hope I'm saying that one right as well. So we'll take a look at the difference between the two. Voronoi diagram, that is one in which you're going to have complex polyhedrons with many faces and it'll conform nicely to the surfaces. That's the information that you will get right from PTC's help. And also in here, there's an option for trabecular shape. A trabecular shape is one in which the cells will be more similar in size to one another. Let's first do it with Voronoi and Trabecular turned off. Let's hit the check mark to generate the structure. Let's give this a few seconds to run. And let me click on the background of the screen to deselect. So there you can see the structure that we get in this case. Let's go back to the lattice and I will click on it and then edit definition. And let's go, let me change the cell scale to one. Let's go to the cell type tab and with Voronoi still selected, let's check the box for a trabecular shape. So again, that one will give you cells that are more similar in size and it prevents you from having very large or very small cells in the matrix. Let's hit the check mark and again, we will let it run. And there we see we have a little bit more evenness along the sides than we had in the first example when we did not have the trabecular option turned on. Let's give it another go. I will left click on the lattice and then choose edit definition from the mini toolbar. Let me change the scale to one again. I don't know why that changes. Let's go to the cell type 
And then instead of Voronoi, I really can't pronounce that. Let's use Delaune, another word I can't pronounce, triangulation. And this is one that uses tetrahedra for the shapes. And you are going to end up having this conform more to the edges, whereas Voronoi conforms more to the surfaces. Delaune is very good for following the edges of the model. And we don't have a trabecular option for that one. Let's hit the check mark in order to generate that lattice. And there you can see, generated much quicker, and we have a lot fewer beams than we had with the Voronoi. Let's go back to the lattice and then edit definition. I'm going to change the cell type to Voronoi. Let me change the scale to one. And also take a look at this drop-down list. You can have it either created on the bounding surfaces inside the volume or both of them. And by default, both is selected. So for example, let's say we just did inside the volume and then hit the check mark. Wow, that really came out weird. Let's edit definition once more and change the cell type from inside volume to on the bounding surfaces. Once again, change my scale back to one, hit the check mark. And there we have it essentially going on the outside surfaces, but not on the interior. Let's go back and change this to what we had before, edit definition. And cell type, let's go to volume and the bounding surfaces. By the way, in that weird one, when I did just the inside volume, if you decrease the target cell size, that'll end up having the different beams touch each other and connect in a better manner. Let's turn, uh, yeah, let's leave trabecular on and hit the check mark. And there we have our stochastic lattice. Let me deselect once more. And I'm going to edit definition just to show you that if you go to the density tab for the stochastic lattice, you can choose variability either based on uniform or by references or based on a simulation. This is new functionality that is in Creo Parametric 8.0. And I'll show you the variability using references and simulation in another video. But lastly, let's generate the mesh of our lattice once more. And there we have our stochastic lattice structure. Again, it uses the random probability distribution. And so you get the benefits of having it lightweight because it has a low volume fraction, but it has those better qualities for handling compressive and shear loads. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.